all of a sudden, Buffalo Bills, Super Bowl contenders. And welcome back to yet another Buffalo Bills pregame. I'm your friend Randy here, hosting the show. Jared is here doing all the analysis. And after a decade of doing the show, we can say for the first time, we are hosting the pregame show of a division champion Buffalo Bills. Woo! How's it feel, Jared? Um, it feels unbelievable. I mean, I really did not expect to for this to happen that early. Uh, obviously, the last game we covered, the Steelers game, I did not expect us to win. But the second we won that, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that we were going to win the division. It would be almost impossible for us not to. Um, it's been a 25-year-long wait, as many people have talked about. Um, and it just feels amazing that we are the division champs. I guess it just hasn't hit me because I don't feel it. Um, the one thing that I have seen, though, is somebody put up like a graphic of like all the – it had a list of the AFC East champions and just listed the Patriots 11 times in a row. And then at the bottom was the Bills. And I was like, holy crap, it really has been a long time, hasn't it? So It's insane that a team was able to win any division in any sport that consistently, like, I don't know. You'd like to think that we'd be able to get them back, but I don't see us winning the next 10 years after this. No. And, but the, and the other sad part, too, there is a sad part, is there's a small part of me that's like, you know what, couldn't we have done this when Brady was here? Like, that would have been so much – I think that would have been so much better. You know what I mean? I'm not complaining about this, but I'm just saying that would have just been so much like, ha-ha, take that, Brady. Good luck trying to get the wild card. Um, but no, alas, we have to – like, we were pretty much predicted to win the division, then we won, you know, which is still great, but – until we beat him in the Super Bowl, perhaps? Maybe. And that's the news, isn't it, Randy? Like, all of a sudden, Buffalo Bills, Super Bowl contenders. And it's not a punchline of a joke. It's, it's at reality. And I, we are as good as we were in the early 90s. We are back to, yes, what we grew up knowing. Okay. Back to what we can only remember from when we were young. And we're starting to have actual conversations about like, oh, like home field advantage throughout the playoffs versus, you know, home field advantage through part of the playoffs, things we never talk about. And, and here we are talking about it. Um, is the home field advantage a huge advantage this season with no fans? Or will there be fans? Uh, Cuomo came out and said that he is looking into allowing fans into the stadium well, to answer your question, a higher seat is definitely a better thing because of travel. Like, we want to have to be able to stay home so we don't have to travel. Right now, we're second seed, which means if the season were to end today, we basically would have two home games if we made it to the divisional round. But when you look at the other schedules of these other teams that's displayed right now on the screen, you can see that, like, well, I mean, Pittsburgh looks like they're crumbling, so they could go 0-2 against the – Colts and the Browns and then you got Tennessee who will probably split their series between the Packers and the Texans so overall it seems like we're on pace of keeping the number two overall seed and getting a couple games at home so to me I would say getting the higher seed is still very important whether or not fans are allowed into the games moving on uh, we had talked previously about the third quarter dilemma of, of consistently coming out very flat, and uh, obviously the Bills are watching this show uh, because, man, have they turned it around since. Uh, any thoughts? Um, well, two thoughts on that. First of all, um, our views are down. So first of all, if you're watching this, thank you, and please like and subscribe and share this video because we need the views if you like this video please share it. Second of all, I'm glad the Bills were one of those 30 plus people that watched last week's show. Um, because yeah, they look so much better in the third quarter, both against the Broncos, both against the Steelers. Um, I don't know why it started now, but maybe I think because there's been so much attention drawn to it that now they're starting to figure out, okay, this is when we have to start going here, you know? Um. The offensive play calling seems to have been a uh, big part of that. Very aggressive calls in the third quarter. Um, you know, they come out firing. 
Uh, and not coincidentally, Dave Wall has been named and coming up over and over again in terms of head coaching slots that are available. Um, this is a hometown for him. Like we, we might have the advantage of him maybe deciding that this isn't the right time for him to leave for um, uh, another team. Maybe, maybe he wants to get comfortable here before he takes on a head coaching position. You know, it's all conjecture, but um, let's say hypothetically he does leave. Do you think a lot of this success is attributed to him and therefore disappears in his absence? Or is this team set up so well for success that uh, we can promote from within, maintain the continuity, and just keep on chugging along? It's funny um, because all throughout the time here, we keep on shifting – when the Bills have showed bad signs, we keep shifting the blame pretty quickly. McDermott or it's Dable or it's Allen. You know what I mean? It just kind of shifts around. Now you have a, a, a time period where all three are doing pretty good and you kind of look for, well, who's the reasoning behind it? And it's really hard to pick one. You know, it's really hard to be like, ah, who, who's really doing this? And if you take out one, will the other two fall? And honestly, like every time they talk about Dable leaving, like I don't want it to happen. Like I, I keep on thinking about like how how McDermott still doesn't know how to do a challenge. Um, questions in uh, personnel starting like they got rid of Spain and now uh, Boger is starting at left uh, at left guard. Now maybe that's better, maybe it's not. I haven't looked at all the left guard stats, but like when you see that happen, and then you think, well, who's really taking charge of of Allen? And you're like, well, it's Dable. Like Dable. Allen was so bad when he came into the league and now he's so good. Like that's coaching. Like that wasn't just, Allen just didn't wake up and decide to do that. Like that's coaching right there. And it wasn't well, McDermott. Palmer has been getting a lot of the credit as of late. I, I, I hate that. I hate when Jordan Palmer gets all the credit because Jordan Palmer did jack crap in the league and it's like, Oh, Jordan Palmer. It's like, okay, then why couldn't he do that? Like, Oh, don't tell me like, Oh, his arm was just too weak. You can do some biceps. It wasn't Palmer. All right. No it's I think it's no one of the Bills organization could tell Jared Allen to step into his throat. Or Josh Allen to step into his throat. Yeah. Um, um so back, I, back to, if Dable leaves, so to answer your question, I'm sorry. Dave if Dable leaves, I think they could struggle. Um like this is really Randy, this is the now year. Like we keep on talking about like building the process and everything, and then you get to a point. I think we're at that point. Because it's not just Dable we're talking about. We're talking about other like Matt Milano's probably going to leave. John Brown's probably going to leave. We have to sign Allen eventually. So you're going to probably lose other parts that I'm not even thinking about. Um, and then, you know, those parts get replaced by draft picks and, and free agency and so, so on and so forth. But like right now, this is the time to, to take it, take it as far as we can go. And so that, I mean, that, that's, that's where our mindset has to be. We have to play like, we're going to lose Dable. We have to play like we're going to lose these people. Um, yeah, because more than likely, more than likely we are. Because, I mean, there's how many coaching spots are going to open up, and Dable clearly is – how could he not take an interview, you know? Um, you don't have to look too far back in Bill's history. Losing an offensive coordinator was the beginning of the end for uh, Rex Ryan. Oh, with Greg Roman. <laughs> yeah, they fired him after week two. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the thing, the thing, the only argument I will say about pro McDermott and anti uh, Dable is that they did take the 2017 team to the playoffs, and that was without Dable. It was with Tyrod, um, and it was with Tyrod, and not Dable. But I always have felt, and I said this, and you can go back to other videos. You, could, I always felt that that was more so McDermott coaching Rex's team. You know what I mean? There wasn't enough changes yet. This was. McDermott hadn't taken his team where he wanted him to. And, and Randy, I go back to Nathan Peterman. If he doesn't throw those five interceptions against the Chargers, um, they leave Peterman in. They don't make the playoffs in 2017. They don't make it in 2018. And if they don't make the playoffs in 2019, holy crap, McDermott's gone and we're not where we are now. Um, it's funny that you bring up Peterman because it really goes against what I was about to say. Is that you? What I was going to say is that you almost have to trust – McDermott to choose someone if, if Dable is gone it would seem that McDermott is very good at picking out people who will work well uh, within the organization and, and to work with McDermott and the team so you might have to be able to just 
put your faith in McDermott that he's made the right decision up to this point and will continue to do so. But then you remind me of Peterman, and I remember on this show saying, how can, how can we trust this guy to put Peter, after he puts Peterman in? Peterman. We do have a game this week coming up uh, yeah. against our biggest rival. Uh, we did mention that it doesn't feel quite the same without Brady, but we're going into New England with a billboard in their town saying we're the best fans. Uh, large favorites. They're guaranteed a losing season. We're guaranteed division. It's, it's like an uh, episode of the Twilight Zone. Um, yeah. What do you think of the game coming up? Um, is our offense TF matchup I mean, against them this week? Since they only scored four field goals against Miami, like it looks like an easy win. And I, I mean, it's, it's so hard to believe. Um, I think Belichick is in a situation he has never been in really. Like he's out of the playoffs, or at least not in 20 years. He's out of the playoffs. Um, you got to get a new quarterback. You might as well see who you have. So maybe Belichick and he probably wants a better draft pick. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jared Stidham is the quarterback against the bills um, on Monday night football, because why not see what your other quarterbacks have? Um, which in this case, I believe the only one is Stidham. Um, you know what you have with Cam Newton. Um, you know what you have with Brian Hoyer. So you might as well put Stidham in and see how he does. And then that's basically a gift to the bills because then that's another win and we're trying to still go up the charts or up the seedings. I, I should, I should say um, for the playoffs. Um, so that's one possibility. The other possibility is Belichick is still Belichick. He still, he still plays to win and he knows Josh Allen still. It, I mean, we did pretty well against him in uh in the first matchup, but if you still go back and you look at Josh Allen's stats for every game, they're just not that good. Um, he knows how to play them very well. And we'll, and I think they could still run it against us as well. So there's still some possibilities for the Patriots to win the game. Um, but I don't think they have the desire to. Um, you don't think Belichick eliminated from the playoffs is it would be like full on tank mode? Like let's try to just get the best draft pick we can. That's what I mean. He might, he might just put in Stidham. That might be his way of doing it. Putting in Stidham, you know, Stidham's not going to do anything. But at the same time, he can evaluate the quarterback and still do worse and get the draft pick. I mean, this is the perfect time for him to, to do that. I mean, it's almost a gift that they can rule Stidham out as any sort of future. Um, and then they can move forward looking for some sort of another quarterback. They could still sign Cam Newton again, but they could also, you know, look at the draft or elsewhere. So without with there being some uncertainty what who we're facing, do you think there's any problems our defense is going to face in New, New England? Uh, any problems our defense is going to face? Um, I mean, Cam Newton can still throw the ball. Um, the receivers aren't as plentiful as normal, but, I mean, they still catch the ball. Um, I'm more so worried about their running backs than anything. We still – we've been doing better against the run. I don't know if you've, you've noticed that. We, we definitely have. But, yeah. like – It's improved, improved on all aspects, more or less, but carry on. Yeah. But, like, the thing is, it really depends on how the game's going. Like, with Denver – they kept on running. Like, they were running it at the beginning, and they were keeping up with us, but then they fell behind, so then they started passing more. Um, and any team is going to naturally do that. So if the Patriots can stay on pace with the running game, like, we could have some issues. But if the offense can basically do what it does and get on top at the beginning, then I think the defense will be able to handle um, the Patriots' offense, more or less. So you're picking the Bills? Um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to until this moment, but I, I think I'm going to, uh, I mean, the evidence just points to them winning this game. So, um, so surprisingly I'm predicting the bills to sweep the, the Patriots and they're going to win 27, 20. All right. I'll pick the bills to win 30 to 20. So sorry for the uncontroversial picks, folks. Um, as Jared said, please do like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate the support of everyone. Uh, we are going to be taking the week off for the inconsequential Jets game. We'll be back for the wild card. You mean the My Miami game? Let's... The Miami Jets. Um, <laughs> the no longer winless Jets. What a big week for New York. They're one week away from maybe blowing their first round pick. It would be the most Jetsy thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be back here for the wild card weekend since we're officially not getting the the bye. Uh, so we have a wild card week matchup 
without a doubt, and we're excited for it. Go Bills. Go Bills. I got nothing but room.